Hello, in this video I will explain you what you need to know about warehouse and locations in a do. So uh, first thing, when we speak about a warehouse, we speak uh, in fact about a physical place with a physical address. Uh, so you can go to configuration, then warehouse, and here you will see the different warehouse this that you have. You can have one like here or several. Let's go inside one warehouse and here you will see that you have different information. You have the name of your warehouse, a short name that will be used for the sequence. Then you have so the name of the company and you can here uh, set up the address of this uh, warehouse. You see that uh, for the company San Francisco the physical address is this one, but you can associate another address to this uh, warehouse. And then here you have how you will receive the goods if it's in one step or several steps. And the same for the outbound uh, moves. So if you would like to receive uh, like in pay packship in three steps, or directly you take the stock and you send it directly to your customer. Then you have some additional options about the resupply. You can decide to uh, dropship your subcontractors, to resupply your subcontractors uh, from your warehouse, and you have also the possibility to manufacture. And if you choose that you manufacture inside your warehouse, you can choose how many steps you use usually. And then the last one is the buy to resupply. Globally, it's all the parts that are available for this warehouse to the replenishment and then the in and the out management. Here, from here, if I uh, create a new warehouse, I can uh, just call it warehouse number two and choose a short name like this one. I can save and now as I have created a new warehouse, you will see that I have a new option here to resupply from another warehouse. All the configuration that are here are the main configuration that uh, you use usually. So each time that a product arrives at your warehouse, most of the time you will receive it in one step and you will send usually like in two steps uh, the, your goods. So this is really the main configuration that will happen from there. Uh, you see here, for example, that uh, it's not possible to have two, the, two times the same address uh, for uh, two different buildings. So what you can do on your warehouse, uh, on your contact, is to go to uh, your company. Like here, it's my... Uh, company, I will find it is this one, and I can decide to uh, edit and to add a new uh, delivery address, and I will say warehouse two, and I will change just the number, and I will say that it's two hundred and fifty-two, and for the rest it's exactly the same, and now I can go back to my warehouse and say that in fact is not this address but this one that will be used. This address is the one that will be used in the different documents to know from where the product will go out. Uh, so this is about the warehouse. Inside a warehouse, you have locations. Locations could be internal location. I will show you one here, enfin, here some slides. I will go first on this one. Uh, yeah, it takes a bit of time. Yeah, so inside your warehouse, you have different locations. So here it's uh, like typical big warehouse, you receive some goods, then you have a place to receive your product, then sometimes you have quality control, then you store your product, 
in storage locations and when you will send goods to customer usually you will uh, go to a closer location for the picking uh, if there is no stock there you will go in other locations to find some stock or to manage the punishment of the picking area uh, and from here you will send the goods that you have picked to the packing area and then all the goods uh, will be moved to uh, to move them inside the truck for uh, sending them uh, the goods to the customer. Uh, in Odoo, yeah. so yeah, sorry. Um, here you have the uh, typical warehouse. So as we have seen, you have globally a storage part, and then you have different in and out zone or intermediary zone where the, the goods transit but usually uh, don't stay uh, forever. Uh, so um, yeah, this zone and this one are temporary where here it's really uh, uh, for storage purpose. But you can also have more uh, elaborate uh, in and out location with uh, quality control, packing, and you can, in addition, have some site location used, for example, uh, for returns or for uh, post uh, inspection uh, for after the quality control or stuff like this. Inside Odoo, you have so globally your uh, warehouse. So, uh, and inside your warehouse, there is like the view location that is just the architectural view to manage the different uh, location below. There is no stock normally uh, inside this location. It's not the purpose. Um, and then you have inside places dedicated for the storage. Uh, this is usually in standard in standard, uh, the default configuration is WH stock is this one, and then you have sub location to manage the uh, to put the product at different places inside your storage location. It could be shelves, it could be zones, but what is important is to don't go too much into detail when it's not needed because at the end you will have to. Uh, manage the complexity of all this location. Um, then you have intermediary lo location, so for uh, the input or the output uh, management, but you can have also site location, as I said, that is written. So it will be each time this location under WH, but uh, not under WH stock that is dedicated for uh, the storage. Uh, I will go in a do then uh, to show you more into detail the different configuration uh, and I will come back then on the slides. So here, so you go to configuration, inventory configuration, then locations and you can see here by default on the run but the location that exists. On a location, I will take the main one like WH stock um, you see, uh, first, what I will do is, you see, I will group by uh, type. Uh, storage category, uh, no, not storage category, uh, location type. <coughs> so you see, the location view are uh, this uh, this one actually. So you have the partner locations that are used for a supplier and for uh, customers and the physical location that are used for external location uh, not uh, in your warehouse. Then you have virtual locations that are used for counterpart when you lose a product, when you uh, uh, gain some products uh, when you use manufacturing and so on. 
and then you have uh, the the view for the different warehouses that you have. Then, uh, so you have here, for example, the customer location, and you have the vendor location that are under uh, the partner location. Uh, as I said here for the virtual, you have the location that are used by default for the property. So when you do some inventory adjustment, when you scrap product, when you produce uh, some uh, product, for some product, some product that are manufactured, and then you have here uh, the different uh, locations for. Uh, that are internal, considered as in your stock. So here I will go on the main one, WH uh, slash stock. So here you choose a name. The parent location is the location that is above this one. So above this one is the WH view uh, location. Then you have the possibility to choose the location type. So here you have different possibility the vendor, if it's dedicated for a supplier, you have the same for the customer. Then the view that I explained before, uh, you have the internal locations for the stock that are um, in your warehouse and uh, it's part of your valuation. Uh, inventory loss and production are used uh, for inventory adjustment and production. And then you have transit location that are used to track products that are uh, incoming in your warehouse or outgoing of your warehouse but still considered as your product so transit location will also still considered as your product so really still part of your uh, inventory evaluation uh, so here you have the information of the company uh, if it's a scrap location you need to tick this box same here for the return location. You can choose a barcode of your, uh, for your location. This will be useful if you use the barcode app. So when you will uh, scan a product, then you can uh, scan a location to uh, send the product to this location. Or when you receive a goods, you can do it when you receive a goods, or you can say, okay, I took this product from this location. So. When you use the barcode, it's really important to um, choose uh, a barcode also for your locations. Then you have the possibility to uh, decide a specific removal strategy for location. If you don't set it uh, or you, <coughs> you set it usually on the product category, but you can, in addition, set it uh, on the, the location. So you can choose between FIFO, LIFO, closest location and FIFO. Closest location is linked to the name of the location you have chosen. So pay attention to the name you choose if you want to use this one. And then from here, but I won't discuss more in, uh, uh, in this video, you have the decision of uh, using a cycle count uh, for this location and decide the frequency. So if it's um, a location that uh, have products that are very important and that you need to count often, you will have a um, few days here to uh, regularly count what you have currently in stock. From this uh, smart button, you can see what is currently in your stock for this location and which criteria rules are applied to this location. Um, if we create one new location, for example, zone A, I will choose my stock here. And for the rest, I can let it like this. If, for example, I would like to create not uh, an additional zone uh, uh, for the stock, I will uh, choose a zone dedicated for the return. I will usually uh, don't put it under the stock because I don't would like uh, that my uh, if I have a new order I don't want that the the stock will be taken from my return because I need to manage my returns so I will create a site location 
under wh that I will call return and then I will consider it as a return location. I will choose uh, a name that will be used for the the barcode, just call it uh, like return and the rest I can let it like this for the example. So this is really easy to um, to create a location. Um, what I would like to add is that you have here, but I won't go into detail, a new feature to use storage uh, category. Storage category can be activated uh, from here. And from this, uh, this case, storage categories will be used to uh, manage your putter rule. And so this topic will be discussed in the putter rules uh, video. Uh, but from this storage category, you can decide if it's a place where product will uh, be the fast mover or slow mover, uh, what will be the capacity of this uh, uh, location for the products and the same in terms of package if you have package. Uh, and you have also different rules depending of uh, when a new product arrives and so on. But that won't go into detail in this part, but like this, you know at least that it exists. Um, what I can also show you is that on the product form, uh, I will take, for example, this one. If you go to inventory, um, yeah, maybe I need to go to the typic mode, you will see, uh, yeah, it's in debug mode. You will see that you have usually counterpart locations. You don't need to change them. Um, so it's the counterpart location for production and inventory locations uh, for inventory adjustment. So as I, I think I mentioned in the video, uh, in Ado, there is always a counterpart location. It means that nothing is lost. So if I uh, receive a product from a supplier, it means that the stock will go from the supplier to my stock. So I will have a min uh, quantity uh, minus in my supplier location to be able to receive the goods in my location. So at the end, everything will be equal to zero because uh, you will have all the time a counterpart location. So, just so you have this counterpart location on the product and linked to the contact, if you are in debug mode, you can see that you have also locations uh, on this tab, sales and purchase, one dedicated for customer, one for vendor, and one for the subcontracting. Um, I think I said everything I wanted in this video. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me if you have any question. Thank you.